This is African Port Business Forum, and I am your host, Philip Nyapo. My guest today is Ashley Morrison, an author, sports journalist, and documentary filmmaker. Ashley Morrison was born in England and moved to Australia, where he has lived for more than 30 years. In between, he spent time in Ghana interviewing and writing the biography of Africa's greatest boxing legend, Azuma Nelson. Followed it up with a video documentary on Azuma Nelson's extraordinary life. In this intimate interview, Ashley Morrison talks about his extreme love of Africa and sports, the privilege of spending time with boxing professor Azuma Nelson, an athlete he describes as a most humble person. It is a two part interview where you will discover Ashley himself as both eloquent and humble a man who himself has compelling life stories worth hearing. Before we started this interview, you said to me, after all these decades in broadcasting, you still hate your own voice. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. I don't, I'm not too happy listening back to it sometimes. But you have to if you want to improve as well. So you have to go back over your work and listen to yourself. And, I, and maybe I'm just a bit too critical of my own voice. Because you've got the quintessential broadcast voice. It's nice of you to say so. I'll tell you a story. When I was actually at school, my drama teacher said that I had an awful voice. And uh, he said, you'll never get anywhere with your voice. And um, so every play we did at school, I had to do it with the various accents. It was an Irish accent, Scottish accent, whatever. And he cast me only if I did an accent. And, of course, funnily enough, when I ended up in the media, broadcast media, uh, we were laughing about this. So we actually tracked him down on LinkedIn. And I sent him a LinkedIn request and said, I don't know if you remember, you know, you saying this. It's quite funny, but I now work in broadcast. And he, he wrote back going, oh, you know, we teachers, we don't always get it right. I said, no, 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 I'm not having a go at you. I just think it's really funny. Well, that's humble of him to admit that, you know. And I mean, but the thing is, he taught me a lot of other things. So I, I have no ill feelings towards him at all. And I mean, maybe he, in fact, subconsciously made me speak better. I don't know. Well, that, that, that's a possibility because I was just going to ask that uh, when that was said to you, did you feel deflated or what was your reaction? What did you feel inside of you? Because, you know, years down the track, you, you're an accomplished broadcaster. Do you know what? I, d I don't think it really bothered me that much. Um, it was probably a very strange situation. So I, I grew up in England and I grew up in the West Country. So, you know, I should speak like that. We have a sort of broad you know, accent like that. and But because I was sent away to school at the age of seven, you know, again, I was taught to speak properly. So when I went home, my voice didn't fit in. And when I went away to school, my voice didn't fit in. So I was kind of conditioned to that by the time I met this teacher. And it was like, yeah, whatever, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to worry about it. And it turns out you were born in England, as it is. and But you've been living in Australia now for many years, decades. Yeah, I think this year is my 32nd year. 32 years in Australia. Yeah. So how did all these broadcast journalism work, which is also now a part of your business, the Ashley Morrison Media is, uh, how did it all come about for you? I think like a lot of people, a little bit of luck. Uh, I did voiceovers back in the UK for a radio station there. Um, and Which radio station? It was called then GWR Great Western Radio. And it was for the sort of, it was initially it was pr primarily in Wiltshire and Hampshire and Gloucestershire. And then it expanded. I think now it goes sort of a little bit further west into the West Country. And uh, I used to do various sort of voiceovers in different accents, funnily enough, um, for that. And then when I came across to, to Perth, I was playing football for Subiaco, soccer, you know, the proper football. And um, not, the, not the Australian no, no, footy. No, no, no not, not that one. Um, and we had to build new club rooms. And there was Western Suburbs Rugby Club played there. And there was Shenton Park Cricket Club. And we were probably the poor relation and I went back to the UK and I got all this signed memorabilia from the clubs in London. And we didn't really get what we needed from a quiz night. So contacted some of the radio stations. And in those days, 6NR was the big sort of football station. They covered a, a lot. John O'Connell had a show. Richard Crider had a show. And I went on Richard Crider's show. And after that, he rang me and he said, oh, you know, 
you sound like you know what you're talking about. Would you like to come on regularly on the show? And Or could you do a cup report for me next weekend? And I said, oh, but I play. But he goes, oh, no. And I said, well, actually, we got knocked out of the cup, so I could do it. And I remember I did this game. I, I'll never forget it. it was, and I, this is where I think fortune favours you sometimes. The, the final score was 4-2. There were two players sent off and a penalty saved. And I was meant to do a two-minute report, and that was like phoning from a phone. You know, there were no mobile phones then. And uh, I said, can I have an extra minute? So they gave me three minutes to file the report. And then after that, I was asked on. So I really owe a lot to Richard Kreider. There's no doubt about that. And then as a result of that, Peter Vlahos, who's a well-known name in, in broadcasting here in Perth, he was working at 6NR at the time. And then the Perth Glory came along and he goes, I want you to be part of the Perth Glory broadcast because 6NR, people forget, did the very first broadcast of the Perth Glory. So I was part of that and then it's kind of just escalated from there. You are a great commentator in sports, all sorts of sports. How did you develop your love for sports, uh, commentating on, on sporting events. Well, again, that's quite funny because P- Peter Vlahos actually, I think it was on, he, we moved across to 6PR and uh, he got me to commentate a game there and I did it the way that I felt football should be commentated, which was very different to the Australian way where, you know, they like to make it all exciting all the time, whereas I believe a game has peaks and troughs. And anyway, so it didn't, wasn't really well received and uh, I didn't really do it again and I think I did two games and I didn't really enjoy it that much, so I didn't want to do it. And then fast forward a, a bit further, and I was working on the radio there. I'd done, I'd done sort of various stuff. And then at um, 990 Information Radio, we had a commentator that the station manager then decided he was going to part ways with. And he just turned around and goes, you're doing the game this weekend. I said, I don't want to commentate this weekend. He goes, well, I don't care. You're doing it. So I just got thrown in the deep end. Probably didn't do a very good job the first time, but then... Suddenly, as I did it again and again, I started to enjoy it. I started to really get a feel for it. And one of your uh, finest accomplishments, uh, probably for uh, an African audience, uh, would be the fact that you wrote the biography of the great Azuma Nelson, one of the greatest boxers ever, certainly from Africa. Uh, uh, how did that come about, you know, getting to uh, do that book on Azuma Nelson, and not just the book, but also the um, uh, the film documentary, the doc- documentary on the life of Azuma Nelson. Well, actually, the documentary came first. So I, I had a radio show here, which is now a podcast myself, called Not The Footy Show, uh, where we talked all sports but AFL. And I'd done an interview that somebody here sent to an Australian in Ghana who owns one of the, the mining co- uh, drilling companies there, Geodrill and Dave Harper. Dave Harper then contacted me and said, we're looking to make this documentary about Azuma Nelson. I like your interview style. If I flew you to Ghana, would you be prepared to come? And I, of course, knew Azuma Nelson. I like my boxing. Remember when he, watching him when he won the world title, and I thought, wow, I'm not going to say no to this. So obviously said yes. Uh, flew up to Ghana. We sort of spent three days interviewing Azuma, and him and I got on like a house on fire. And it was an absolutely wonderful experience. And then Dave asked me to do the voiceover for the documentary as well. So that was that. And then he's always felt that Azuma's life should become a movie because it's just a phenomenal story, you know, about a humble guy growing up in Ghana who then becomes world champion of the world. And not just world champion, but holds that title for 11 years. And, you know, he's has political issues with people. He also has tragedy in his family as well. So it's a real kind of Hollywood story. It's a human, very human story there. It is. It, it, and he's just the most humble man as well. And so then Dave, I think, had approached a few people about a screenplay and whatever, and they said, well, somebody needs to write the story first on which we can base the screenplay. And when he sat with Azuma, Azuma, very humbling to me, said, if someone's going to do it, I want Ashley to do it. And so yeah, I was very, very fortunate to spend a lot of time with him. I had a lot of laughs and, um, yeah, and we wrote the book and, and I'm very proud of it. I, I think, I hope I've done him justice because I think he's an incredible man. The Professor, The Life Story of Azuma Nelson by Ashley Morrison. Uh, it's got to be work that you are pretty proud of. 
That is. I, I'm very proud of that. I mean, it was. I've read obviously a lot of sporting books and a lot of boxing books, and I, I wanted to try and take people into some of those fights, but I didn't want it to just be a catalog of fights. I wanted to make it a little bit that the reader actually felt like they were there, but also I wanted to try and bring through what an amazing guy he was and how respected he was by those he fought. And the good thing was I got to speak to a lot of the people that he fought, a lot of the referees, etc. And I mean, he is one of the most loved boxers in the world because of his humility. There's the, um, the DVD, Zoom Zoom, the professor, the career of uh, Zoom and Nelson. Now, um, I know you're taken in by his personality, you know, not just as a sports person, but as a a person but I wanted to ask you first of all uh, his art what was extraordinary about it Azuma Nelson as a boxer that you found out as a sports enthusiast who spent quite a lot of time with him I think one of the amazing things about Azuma if you if you look at him is he was a guy who again if you if you know his story he saw the only reason he got into boxing is he saw a bigger boy fighting another smaller boy and the bigger boy was bullying him, and he thought, this is unfair. So he goes, I want to fight the bigger guy. And he went to the gym, and the guy looked at him and said, you're too small. And he then went away, and he came back, and he said, I want to fight him. And he got beaten, and he goes, I felt so humiliated. So he said, I went away, and I watched. And he learned. So he pretty much taught himself, and he would look for weaknesses in his opponents. And I know a lot of boxers have trainers, and they will watch video now, but there was no video in those days. And even in his career, there was very limited video. And he'll tell you, he watched Jersey Joe Walcott, old black and white film, and he modeled himself on that. And I think the thing that I was really impressed with is his ability to change his style, his ability to kind of really mess up the other boxer because he didn't necessarily fight in an orthodox fashion every time he got in the ring. And he would know how to throw them off and he had tactics. And, I mean, he describes when he beat Jeff Fennick, you know, how he said to his brother, tell me when it's round six because I'm going to set him up and beat him in round seven. And his brother was enjoying the fight so much at the end of round six. He goes, I forgot to tell you it's round six. And Azuma goes, now I've got to rock, knock him out in round eight because I'll set him up in this round. <laughs> and, I mean, he just was, to me, a, a guy who knows the art of boxing. And as he'll tell anybody, part of the art of boxing is not getting hit. And if you meet the guy today, I mean, he's 61 years old now and he's as lucid and, and, you know, still got all his faculties because he didn't get hit that often. Boxing didn't have uh, the impact it had on him physically in terms of injury and, yeah. and um, you know, other things you can think about. But, but it's funny because you have him and if you speak to Marvin Hagler and, and people like that, they all had a lot of amateur fights. And I think the problem we're seeing in boxing today is too many young boxers are being pushed into the professional ranks way too early. Whereas Azuma had 50-odd amateur fights. He fought all around the world representing Ghana. And, you know, again, he learned the art in the amateur ranks fighting there. And I think, you know, unless you... It's like anything. If you don't have that grounding, it's going to... You're going to suffer later on. What, what made his tactics outstanding uh, in that he could stand up to so many opponents? I think he has a very good technique and again he knows that you know when you throw a punch it comes all the way through your leg all the way through your body and then through your arm and so he uses all of his body so well and I think that's also he uses his body defensively very well uh, but I just think he studied he watched boxing he learned from other boxers and then he had that ability to absorb that but also then interpret it his way and use some of their skills and tactics I just think he he's to me, a, a freak is the wrong word. I think he's a genius, you know. Well, how does it compare to the greats around the world? Are you talking like the sort of greats like your Sugar Ray Leonard's, Muhammad Ali's and all of that? Look, I think he was a very different fighter to those two that I mentioned. But I think when you go and you, fortunately, you know, when I was writing the book, I got to meet a lot of them. And he is held in that high regard. Because what you have to remember is the era, he won the world title in 1984. Back then, there weren't as many world titles. There were none of these interim titles or any of that. And if you were the number one, you had to fight the number one contender. And everyone, were, you, you were a target for everyone. Yeah, and you couldn't avoid them. And this was the difference. So to me, the records of the likes of Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard, they didn't avoid people. They had to fight them. And so Azuma fought the best there was around. And he managed to be, you, you know, you don't hold a world title for 11 years 
if you're not very good. And I think that is a measure of the man and his ability. And, and also those other greats that we talk about. So I think in that weight division, yes, definitely, he is up there with the best in the world. And having spent so much with him as a person, you got away um, with the gift of being a personal friend. How do you see him as a person outside of sports? Ah, very, very kind, generous, humble man. I mean, if you go around Ghana... Literally, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you know, you, you're in his car and you pull up at traffic lights and everyone goes, Professor, zoom, zoom. And the car is surrounded in seconds. You know, there are just everybody. And he doesn't get phased by it. He gives everybody the time of day. He'll wind down his window. He'll say hello, hello. And he says that he believes that God put him on this earth to fulfill this role and to try and unite Ghana and give people belief that you can achieve something from nothing. And I just find his humility is just amazing. I don't think I've ever met a more humble man when I look at what he's achieved. Um, but he's also a very generous man. Like they, there was a stage where, I don't know if this is still the case, but every morning people would queue up outside of his house asking for him to donate to their business plan or to pay their university fees. And he would call them in, he would sit down and talk to them and listen. And some people he would assist and there are i believe many doctors and lawyers that have now gone through university that he paid their university fees and uh, uh, they're sort of not beholden but they you know owe him the the fact that he gave them an opportunity and yet he doesn't ask for anything in return you know so he's given that altruistic um, money to help other people get on in life and and I, i think people that can do that are really special people And that is part one of the interview with Ashley Morrison, an author, sports journalist, and documentary filmmaker. Ashley wrote the biography of Africa's greatest boxing legend, Zuma Nelson. Check African Pod Business Forum soon for part two of Ashley's interview, where he reveals more about Zuma Nelson. Ashley Morrison himself is a man with compelling life stories all coming up in part two of this interview only on African Pod Business Forum. Mm -hmm.